What up, YouTube? Team Movies here. Now, this video, I'm going to be talking about my favorite movies of 2013 because I've been doing uh, talk about like the uh, best films of each deck um, of each of the uh, 2010s, and I already did best 2010 movies, 2011, 2012, and now it's 2013. This year because 2013, 2013 has some pretty solid uh, films that got released in that year. So, with that being said, here's my 10 favorite movies. Of 2013. All right, coming in at number 10, it is Captain Phillips. Now, this movie, of course, stars uh, Tom Hanks as uh, Richard Phillips, who ends up uh, who ends up um, being uh, taken uh, hostage on um, on his uh, you know ship on his uh, ship uh, by these uh, Somali pirates, led wonderfully by uh, Bucky um, Abdi. I think his last name is I. I not really good at pronouncing his, uh, his name that well, but he's a really cool actor, and he, I, I thought uh, Bucky was really great in this movie. I mean, this was his uh, first feature film, and since then he's been doing some other stuff. Like, uh, he's on uh, season two of Castle Rock. Uh, he was in Blade Runner twenty forty nine. So he's been in some uh, other intriguing um, projects. But man, it hit his role in uh, Captain Phillips was really great. I mean, he actually ended up getting an Oscar nomination for his performance and a well-deserved uh, nomination. I mean, they, he, he was an actually, he was a uh, person that they, uh, that was discovered at, by being a cab driver, so there's that. But, uh, yeah, Captain Phelps is remarkable. It is really intense. Uh, Tom Hanks, I mean, I'm still surprised he did not get an Oscar nomination for this because he was great in Captain Phelps. You know, it's directed by Park Greengrass, who did a great job at directing. I mean, if you guys haven't really seen Captain Phillips right now, it's remarkable. Coming in at number nine, it is Prisoners. Now, this movie is actually... Now, Denise Villeneuve has done loads of other stuff in recent years, like uh, Arrival, Blade Runner 2049. And, of course, he has Dune coming out next year. But to me, the best film he's made had got to be Prisoners. I mean, it stars Hugh Jackman, uh, who plays this, uh, plays his dad named, uh, Keller, uh, Dover, who's, uh, who's 16, um, uh, who's 60 year old, uh, Dora, um, Anna and her friend as if, uh, getting, um, go missing and they go, uh, and so, uh, you got, um, this detective named Loki, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, who's assigned to, uh, you know, um, find, um, the missing kids, and you also got, uh, Paul Dana, who, uh, becomes the, uh, Evan, the uh, suspect in the uh, kidnapping. It has a great cast. Like you also got uh, T um, Terrence Howard was in this. Viola Davis, Melissa Leo. You also had a uh, Maria Bello, uh, Dylan Minnett from uh, Game, um, That's Who Was Wiping. This movie is really intense. Uh, de it is Denny's venue's best. Yay! Anyway, uh, yeah, it is uh, Venu's uh, best work, in my opinion. Uh, Jake Jones, I'm surprised he did not get an Oscar nomination for this, because he was that magnificent in this movie. I mean, yeah, if you guys haven't really seen... Uh, like, if you guys haven't really seen Prisoners by now, definitely give it a go. It's really amazing. Very underrated, too. I mean, not many people really talk about Prisoners, but it's really terrific. All right. Now, coming in at number eight, it is Nebraska. Now, this stars uh, Bruce Stern, who plays this uh, this old buzzer named uh, Woody Grant, who can really uh, who really can barely uh, walk down the, um, the streets of his homes in uh, Billings, uh, Montana. Uh, but he mainly uh, walks walks around, uh, you know, uh, for you know uh, drinks mainly. But, uh, Woody ends up, uh, receiving this, uh, sweepstake, uh, notice in the mail, and, um, insists on, like, making a seven, 750 mile trip to, uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, to collect, uh, his, uh, prize money, and he ends up going on the trip with his son, played wonderfully by Will Forte, and he also had, uh, June Square Boot, uh, who actually played, um, Darren's on-screen, uh, wife in this, uh, I thought June Scribb was terrific in this movie. I mean, she, of course, ended up getting an Oscar nomination for this. I mean, this was actually the movie that really put her on the map and all. 
I mean, Squib is like uh, in her seventh, I believe. And boy, who knew that a seven-year, seven-year old uh, actress could make, could become a breakout? Um, so like she's been in stuff beforehand, but this was really like her. I guess you say it was more of her breakout uh, performance. And Squib was terrific. Um, uh, you know, Bruce Dern was um amazing. You know, he of course ended up uh, getting an Oscar nomination, a well-deserved nomination. Uh, Will Forte shows that he can do more than just, uh, you know, straight-up comedies. Uh, Will, the uh, father and son dynamic chemistry between Dern and Forte was great. The movie was directed by Alexander Payne. I mean, he, of course, gave a side, uh, yeah, Sideways, um, uh, The Descendants, Election. I mean, what a great director. And wait, the, and the movie was also in full on black and white, which was pretty cool to watch. I mean, yeah, if you guys haven't really seen Nebraska by now, it's such a really tough job. Alright, coming in at number seven, it is American Hustle. Now, this film was, of course, directed by uh, David O. Russell, um, and it stars of the likes of Christian Bale, Bradley Cooper, uh, Jennifer Lawrence, you had Amy Adams in this, uh, Robert De Niro, uh, Michael Payton, Lucy K. I mean, really, really cool cast. And you've got uh, Christian Bale, who plays this uh, con artist named uh, Irving uh, Rosenfeld, who uh, ends up falling for this uh, fellow grifter named uh, Sidney uh, Prosser, played by uh, Amy Adams, and... They end up getting uh, caught red-headed by this FBI agent named uh, Richie uh, D'Amasio, played by uh, Bradley Cooper. So uh, Irving and Sidney are forced to uh, work undercover as a part of uh, D'Amasio's uh, sting operation uh, to nail this uh, New Jersey mayor yeah, named, uh, you know, played wonderfully by Jim Renner. And you also had uh, Jennifer um, Lawrence, who played wonderfully as a uh, as uh, Irv's um, jealous wife here. And this, of course, uh, is based on the uh, 1970s uh, Abscam uh, case. Very great film. I mean, this movie did score loads of Oscar nominations when it was released. Uh, and it was the reteam, like the Civil Alliance playbook uh, reteaming with uh, Bradley Cooper, uh, Jennifer Lawrence, Rob De Niro, and David Russell. So it was pretty cool to see. Uh, because, uh, like, a year before this movie got released, uh, the playbook ended up getting released. So. So, uh, there's that. But, uh, yeah, American Hustle is really remarkable. If you guys have never really seen American Hustle by now, definitely go check it out. Right. Coming in at number six, it is Spring Breakers. Now, this is one of the weirdest movies I ever saw in 2013. Now, it was actually the first, like, the film that really uh, introduced me to the A24 uh, company. And Spring Breakers is... It's one of the messed up movies that ever got released that year. I mean, it stars literally former Disney stars like Selena Gomez and Vanessa Hudgens in very, in very awkward and watchy roles here. And, I mean, it does saw, um, the, of course, does saw, uh, Gomez and Hudgens as well as, uh, Ashley Benson and, uh, Harmony and, uh, Rachel Corrine, who plays these, uh, college students who, uh, Ends up, uh, you know, um, robbing a, a diner, and uh, but they end up getting uh, arrested and all. So uh, the only one person who ended up bailing them out is this uh, aspiring rapper artist named uh, Alan, played played by uh, James Franco. And so, like, the, um, some of the gals end up decide to join uh, Alan on the uh, life of crime and all, and most of them end up falling for the guy too. I mean, this is this movie is actually. It's a weird, awkward film to watch, and, I mean, it features a guy with a gun in his mouth, and I don't mean, uh, what you, like, it literally, okay, <laughs> alright, I gotta be careful how I say this, but, uh, it features James Franco's Alan character literally sucking a gun, as if it was, you guys get the chest now. I mean, it's, and James Franco, I think it's probably one of his, like, coolest roles to date, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, Franco was really more remarkable in this film. And Selena Gomez and Vanessa Hutchins. Sorry, guys. Anyway, uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, um, Hutchins and uh, Gomez show that they can do more than just, uh, you know, Disney stuff, and... 
either of them were both really uh, terrific characters. And it is directed by uh, Harmony Corinne, who also uh, did the screenwrite for uh, kids. Yeah, so he's no straight out working at, uh, at these type of films. I mean, it's really cool. He also had uh, Gucci May was also in this. Really great performances. I mean, definitely go check out Spring Breakers if you guys haven't seen that. Robert. Alright. Now, coming in at number five, it is another Tom Hanks film, and that is Saving Mr. Banks. Now, this movie is really remarkable. Now, you, of course, you got uh, Tom Hanks who plays wonderfully as the, uh, you know, what does he? Uh, you also had uh, Emma Thompson who plays the uh, Mary Poppins author, uh, P.L. Trap. <laughs> you good. And it's really about the making of uh, Mary Poppins, if you want to look at it that way. And. And P.L. Travis didn't really like the idea of her uh, book, you know, being turned into movies, so did that. And he also had uh, Colin Farrell, who I thought at, really um, outacted uh, Tom Hanks in this. Uh, he also had uh, Bradley Whiffer, B.J. Novak, uh, Paul Giamatti. Um, he also had uh, Kathy Baker. Some really great cast. I mean, yeah, this movie is really remarkable. I, it was pretty cool to see uh, Disney World on screen. That was pretty cool to watch. Uh, Tom Hanks really... You know, really embody the role of uh, Walt Disney. Uh, yeah, really great uh, performances. Uh, if you guys haven't really seen Sam and Spanks, it's really terrific. Alright. Coming in at number four, it is... Anyway, uh, coming in at... At uh, number four, it is The Way, Way Back. Now, now, uh, the way way back is of course uh, directed by uh by uh Nat Faxon and uh Jim Rash. And it stars uh this this uh, young actor named uh Liam James who plays this kid named uh Duncan who's this uh socially awkward uh teen who must uh, spend the summer at a uh, at a beach house uh, with his mother played by Tony Collette and her uh, boyfriend named Trent played by uh Steve Carell. But he also ends up getting a yes, he ends up getting a summer job uh, at this like uh, at this uh, play um play pool, or I should say pool park I should say. Um, and he ends up being friends with the worker played wonderfully by uh, Sam Rockwell. Uh, you also had uh, Anna Sophia Robb who plays like this girl that he ends up uh, falling for. You also had uh, Matt the P in this. Uh, Maya Rudolph. I mean, really, this movie is really funny. It's a great. Probably one of the best coming of age movies in uh, of this past decade. Really remarkable film. I mean, this is actually also the film that really showed me that Steve Carell could do more than just uh, that straight up comics. I mean, Steve Carell was great in this. Uh, Tony Collette was great. Uh, you know, Sam Rockwell. I mean, it's probably one of my favorite uh, Sam Rockwell roles. Uh, Zoe Eleven was great. Uh, Rock Project. Really great cast. Like, if you guys haven't seen The Way Way Back, Definitely give that one a go. Alright, coming in at number three, it's probably one of the best comedies of that year. Stop it, guys. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, the drunks are out. Anywho. Now, back to, uh, to the films. Alright. Now, as I was saying, uh, This is the End is definitely probably one of the best, you know, comedies of the year got released. Um, you know, it's pretty much about, uh, like, you know, Seth Rogen. And also, uh, it's another film with uh, James Franco, uh, by the way, so... So yeah, it literally got like not one but two James Franco movies on this list. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, this is the end. You know, stars uh, James Franco uh, who plays well himself, who's showing a, uh, who's trying, who's like showing this uh, you know, cele- um, party with these uh, you know, with his celebrity pals, and of course the uh, the world starts uh, pretty much uh, starts ending, and uh, tra- and lots of uh, you know his. Celebrity friends at the 
Yeah, yeah, kill one by one. And you also got uh, Craig. Um, you know, you also got uh, Craig Robinson. Uh, you also had Seth Rogen, uh, Emma Watson, who I never really heard Emma Watson curse as much as there. I mean, if you ever want to see, like, hear uh, Hermione curse up a storm, this is definitely a much watch. Uh, you also had um, Kevin Hart play himself, uh, uh, Jay Barisha, uh, Jonah Hill. I mean, the exorcism of Jonah Hill. Come on. Yeah, this movie is really awesome. I mean, really uh, hilarious, raunchy, uh, some really you know, laugh out funny scenes within this. I mean, yeah, this is the end is just, it was downright hilarious. I mean, I literally saw this movie twice when it got released um, back in 2013. And it's a really great one. Definitely go check out the way, way back. Uh, uh, definitely go check out the uh, world's, um, this is the end I'm to say. The world's end is a totally different movie. That one, that was the uh, other uh, end of the world movie with, uh, with uh, Simon Pegg and Ned Frost. That's a, like, in 2013, they had, like, literally not one, but two, uh, world end based movies. Uh, it was this, and, uh, The Ways, um, and, uh, The World's End, so. Yeah, what's up? How are you? So, yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, definitely go check out the, uh, This is the End if you guys haven't seen that. I mean, James Franco playing himself. Come on. Alright, coming in at number two, it is Fruitvale Station. Now... Now, uh, yes, um, it was really, uh, now, this was actually the movie that really, uh, brought, um, Michael B. Jordan to the map for most folks, um, of course, you know, I first started, uh, taking notes of him when he was in, uh, Chronicle and all, but, man, his role at Fruitvale Station is one powerful role. Like, you know, he plays, uh, this, uh, 22-year-old uh, guy named, uh, Oscar Grant, who is, you know, trying to, like, uh, start a, like, Who's now uh, trying to um, have a uh, hard, um, who's of course trying to uh, have a, a clean life and uh, support his girlfriend, played wonderfully by uh, Melanie uh, Diaz, and um, his young daughter, played by uh, Arena Arnell. But this is where uh, you know Oscar Grant tr tragically he ended up uh, you know um, getting shot by uh, by a cop in this, and yeah, this is one really tragically. A power film. I mean, I I'm not gonna lie. I literally I teared up a little bit with this film. You know, Octavia Spencer was also great. He, uh, she played one. She did wonderfully as uh, as Oscar's uh, you know, mom here. Octavia Spencer was terrific. Uh, Michael B. Jordan really. I I'm still surprised he did not get an Oscar nomination for this because he was that great in this movie. Uh, it was directed by Ryan Coogler, who of course uh, later on. This was his uh, directorial debut, so, and then later on, he will gave us, uh, you know, Creed and Black Panther, or, of course, start on uh, Michael B. Jordan, so, there's that. I mean, Fruitvale Station is, it's a terrific film. I mean, uh, really, um, you know, heartbreaking to watch. Uh, great performances. I mean, definitely go check out Fruitvale Station if you guys haven't seen that. Alright. Uh, coming in at number one, it is The Wolf of Wall Street. Another movie with uh, Joan Hill in it, by the way. And this is the last movie you ever want to watch with your parents, by the way. Like, this this is kind of a bit of an awkward movie to watch with anyone, actually. And, I mean, you got Leo DiCaprio, who plays John Belfort, who, uh, of course, uh, takes the uh, level job as a uh, Wall Street uh, brokerage uh, firm, at a uh, Wall Street brokerage firm, and he ends up, uh, he of course, uh, ends up, um, you know, uh, um, defrauding, uh, you know, uh, wealthy investors out of millions and all, and you got the uh, FBI and the C, um, CEC who are trying to close in on his, uh, scam, and it was a movie that really, uh, put, uh, Margaret Robbie on the, uh, map, Jonah Hill, uh, scored his second Oscar nomination, a well-deserved nomination, to be exact, uh, Leo DiCaprio, who I think he could have easily won an Oscar for this, but I guess Matthew McConaughey was a little more better in the Dallas Buyers Club. And funny enough, uh, McConaughey was also in this movie too, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you also had Kyle Chandler, uh, John um, Bernthal, really great cast, great performances, uh, really hilarious. It, it, it's not really too much of a comedy, but it has lots of comedy stuff in it. Uh... I, I love seeing Margaret Robbie in this, uh, and not for the obvious reasons, too. 
by the way. I mean, obviously, there are obvious reasons to like Margot Robbie in this, but, yeah, um, yeah, Wolf of Wall Street, I mean, John Belfort is not really that much of a likable guy, but, man, Leo DiCaprio played that role just perfectly, uh, yeah, if you guys haven't really seen, um, the Wolf of Wall Street, definitely give it a go, it's really terrific. Alright, that's pretty much it. Uh, let me do the quick rundown. Uh, 10, Captain Phillips. 9, Prisoners. Uh, 8, Nebraska. 7, American Hustle. Uh, 6, Spring Breakers. 5, uh, Save Miss Banks. Um, 4, The Way Way Back. Uh, 3, This is the End. 2, Fruit Bell Station. And 1, The Wolf of Washington. And, you know, all due respect to 12 Years a Slave, that movie was pretty good. But how on earth Wolf of Wall Street lost over that? It's still beyond me, but whatever. Anyway. Now, there was also some other movies that was really great in uh, 2013. Um, there was, of course, uh, Man of Steel, uh, um, Gravity, World War Z, Iron Man 3, Frozen was pretty great. Uh, before uh, Midnight, Star Trek Into Darkness. Uh, there was the second Hobbit movie, uh, Destination of Smug, uh, Fast and Furious 6, The Conjuring. Pacific Rim, The Great Gatsby, Speak of DiCaprio, uh, Monsters University, Inside Lewis Davis, uh, Blue Jasmine, uh, The Bling Ring, Speak of Amber Watson, uh, let's see. Uh, Philly Brown was pretty good, uh, there was also Disconnect, uh, The Croods, some really great films that got released that year, but uh, let me leave it to you guys, what are some of your favorite movies of 2013? Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for more notifications. This here is C-Move Saigon.